I am Catalina from Nemira Publishing House and I'm here today with uh, Brianna West. Brianna is a writer, an author and a poet and uh, she's best known for her work on mindfulness and emotional intelligence. Now I'm happy that today we are going to discuss about The Mountain Is You, Tu Ești Muntele, a book that we recently published in Romania. Hi Brianna, how are you? Hello, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Brianna, for uh, accepting our invitation. <laughs> Brianna, uh, we are curious, when and how did you decide to write this book? Okay, so maybe half a decade ago, I might, I might have the timeline a little off, but roughly, I, I just began a journey of my own self-inquiry. Um, and I've been on a mental health spirituality journey for a very long time. But it was probably about five years ago that I started, you know, really going inward and asking myself about my own self-sabotaging behaviors. And the more I questioned my myself, the more I discovered that the things that I was doing that seemed to be holding me back the most, I was so attached to them and I couldn't stop because those behaviors were serving these needs, these unconscious needs. And what I realized was when I got really honest with myself, oh, I actually kind of like doing that. Wait, that kind of feels good when I do that. that and that was so strange to me. So when I started going deeper, I realized, oh, I have an unmet need. I have an unmet unconscious need. And I think that very often, I, I, I can't say this is consistent for every single person, but very often I think those needs boil down to very simply needing to feel safe, needing to feel loved, needing to feel taken care of. And when we are thinking about our own growth um, as human beings, very often that requires us to step out of our comfort zone, maybe challenge the status quo, do things that are uncomfortable, things that are counterintuitive to us. So it, re it, it requires of us another level of self-awareness to realize that the behaviors that we are engaging in, they are for a purpose. It's not always that we hate ourselves or that we're not smart enough, or it, it's I honestly think it's very rarely that. It's actually very often that we love ourselves so much that we're finding creative ways to get those needs met, even when we won't fully acknowledge them. So as I was going on this journey, I realized that I had never read a book um, about um, specifically about self-sabotage. I've definitely read a lot of books that had touched on the topic, but not one where a lot of information was kind of compiled in, in one. And it was around that time that um, I, well, so I wrote all of my books um, out in the mountains in California, where I now live, as you can see <laughs> behind <laughs> me. Um, and as I remember one day I was writing and I was looking up at the mountain range and I realized that if we wanted to, you know, use the metaphor of a mountain being some big challenge in, in your life, I was thinking if I had, if I was literally scaling the mountain that was in front of me, the mountain was never going to shrink or get easier, but actually my skill would have to increase. I would have to get better at the climb and that's what would get me over it. And so that's when I just, it just kind of came to me, the, ti the title came to me first, The Mountain Is You. And um, the concept was that it's, it's actually, it's not the mountain that we master it's ourselves because the mountains are always going to be there so it's that we have to become our own truest friends our own most loyal hiking companions if you want to stick with that metaphor <laughs> <laughs> um, so and then I and, and and I had been writing about self-sabotage for a while so I I put the book together with some things that I had I had already done and then I built upon that whoa Thank you for sharing with us this amazing journey. Next, uh, I would like to tell you that I really loved this part, and I quote, we are programmed to seek what we've known. Even though we think we're after happiness, we're actually trying to find whatever we're most used to. I think it is also a great summary of the book. <laughs> 
And these things we're most used to can be good ones, but also very damaging. Did you ever feel that you were actually stuck in this loop, going over and over again towards something familiar, but not necessarily good? Yes, absolutely. So first of all, thank you. And second, I, I totally agree that that could sum so much up. And actually that if that was more common knowledge, I think it would be really helpful to a lot of people to understand that anything new, no matter how good it is, is going to be uncomfortable until it's also familiar. And so as I was on my my own growth journey and trying to get myself to stick to healthier habits and healthier like mindsets and you know hanging out with the right people and just expanding my life everything was uncomfortable even though I logically knew this is better for me than the alternative um, but but the truth is that, what feels good to us is just really whatever we become comfortable with. And so the journey is not about asking ourselves, what is already comfortable to me? Because for most of us, and or maybe I'll say many of us, chaos is very comfortable. Um, unhealthy habits are very comfortable. They're, they're, they're soothing even. But they can also be unconscious. You know, maybe we grew up in an environment that was chaotic. And so we conflate love and, and family and if for being pain. And so at an unconscious level, without even realizing, we are associating the two and recreating a similar dynamic or feeling without realizing that we even want it. So I just think it is so incredibly important to understand that our comfort zone is is not the the limit of our of our capacity, our capability, or even our potential. It's just what we have gotten used to. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Just what we are used to. What was the hardest part for you while uh, writing this book? Oh, that's a good question. Um, every time I write a book or you know start working on myself in some way, um, it, to write a book like The Mountain is you, you you really have to go through and heal your own self-sabotaging behaviors. So as I was writing, I was really healing. As I was writing, I was really figuring my own self out and really changing my life like a lot. And I would I would say that that was the hardest part. It wasn't about just getting the words onto the page. It was the real-time experiences that I was kind of forcing myself to have um, to grow and to open myself up and to confront a lot of fears and to also be able to take a look at myself um, in a grounded and honest way where I could make decisions about my life coming from a higher perspective, um, a more mature perspective, and to consider you know, what I was doing or even just what my routines were and what I was investing my energy in and if I would be happy with that in five years, 10 years, 15 years. So I would say that the hardest part of writing the book was having to take a, a honest look at my own self and to start to make real changes in my own life. And then kind of that transpired into the writing as well. Rihanna, but what is the the most important thing that uh, that you've learned through your journey that you want to share with us? I love this question. Um, I'm going to go with the thing that I would tell my younger self if I could speak to her. That discomfort inside of you, it's there for a reason. Um, it's not there because you're unworthy or because you're punishing yourself or because you're not good enough. It's there because there's something inside of you that knows you are meant for more, you are capable of more, and you're ready for more. And that discomfort is trying to move you from where you are to where you are meant to be. That discomfort is a friend. It is an ally on your journey. And, you know, I think for years I was under the impression that, oh, you know, <laughs> who is ever really happy or at peace. And there's probably always going to be things that don't feel good in life. There'll always be challenges. And to a degree that is true, but I have to say that in the years I have spent out of alignment with what I know is a, a peaceful, healthy, grounded, true, authentic life to me versus getting into all of that, 
um, the emotional difference is like night and day. And so I think I want to add on to that. Not only is change possible, but it is also possible to rewire and recondition yourself and reestablish your own sense of self in a way that allows you to just exist on like a day-to-day basis in a way that is profoundly more peaceful and that that is absolutely possible and that while there are always challenges you will get you can get a lot better at handling them to the point that your overall life is a lot more satisfying and a lot more fulfilling and that's not a myth and that's not an empty promise that other people would make to you that is a very real thing and to just keep trusting because that discomfort will go away when you are on the path you are meant to be on and that that path doesn't mean like oh i've arrived and i've made it and there's nothing left to do that's not what that means it just means that you are living in a way that is in alignment with your own truth um and so getting back into that integrity and into that truth will alleviate a lot of that and even though we live in a profoundly challenging world it is possible to bring yourself into a space where you can still find peace and purpose and impact. It is possible. Do not give up. I love that you said that discomfort is an ally in your journey. (laughs) Um, Who are the people that influenced you the most in becoming the version that we see today? Yes, there are so many. I have so many amazing friends who are on similar paths and, you know, we, we talk all the time and have learned together and grown together. But I would also like to say in terms of my kind of like my idols and, you know, people I really look up to, um, I think someone who's had a really big impact on me is the author Cheryl Strayed. Um, she's my favorite author and her book, Tiny Beautiful Things, um, was one of the most impactful books that I have ever read. And I would recommend that everybody picks it up. It is a collection of um, advice columns that she wrote actually as an anonymous uh, columnist um, on this website called Rumpus. Um, And they put it together into a book and it, Cheryl is unbelievably gifted and her writing, I feel came to me, oh gosh, it must've been a decade ago at this point, maybe almost 12 years ago. I'm not sure. Well, it it came out quite a while ago. And I remember when I read that book, it taught me how to think like the most mature, empathetic compassionate but sharp version of myself it i felt like that book taught me how to think like the adult that i wanted to be and for that i owe her i can't even say so much (laughs) cheryl if you ever see this i love you (laughs) i'm pretty sure that a lot of people are are saying the same same things about you also (laughs) rihanna in the end i would really like to kindly ask you to leave a message for your uh, Romanian readers? Yeah. I would say to all of my Romanian readers, it's going to be okay. Even if you don't know how right now, even if you don't know how you are possibly going to get over whatever mountain it is that you are looking at, you will. It really will pass. It really will be okay. And you have to return to that knowing in, in the times of your deepest emotional pain and chaos and uncertainty, just know you are so much stronger than you think you are. And sometimes you don't know the depth of that strength until it's been tested, uh, until your limits have been shown to you and you've had to push past them. And you have discovered that Not only could you get through everything you thought you couldn't, but you can thrive on the other side too. And it really is going to be okay. Thank you so much, Rihanna, for your time and your honesty. And I cannot uh, wait for everyone to to read Tu Yesh Montale. Thank you again. And um, I'm sure we're going to hear from each other pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you so much.